Now, on to the avoiding system, which, of the three systems, approaching, avoiding, and affiliating, is the one that's probably most often grabbed by stress reactivity, because it's the one that's most focused on dealing with threats and activating a sense of fighting, fleeing, or freezing. Of course, it's natural and inevitable to experience discomfort with what's unpleasant as it passes through the mind, and it's natural to want to reduce that discomfort, whether it's for oneself or others. And of course, it's appropriate, it's even admirable to stand up against things that harm yourself and others. The problem comes when we react to these with anger and fear and stress. So let's do two practices, one related to feeling stronger and safer, and the other related to releasing anger and replacing it with peace and forgiveness. Now we're about to do a practice on feeling stronger and especially on feeling safer, but it's important that I say a couple of things first. In this world, there is no perfect safety. None of us ultimately is safe from old age, disease, and death, for example, let alone the lesser slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Fundamentally in life, it's important to be aware of the true threats to oneself and to others. In other words, to be aware of the tiger that really is in the bushes. On the other hand, it's also important in life not to think that there's a tiger there when there really isn't a tiger there, or it's a paper tiger in those bushes, or a tiger staked to a chain, or a dead tiger, or a baby tiger. And of these two great mistakes, on the one hand thinking there is no tiger but there really is one, or on the other hand thinking that there is a tiger but there really is not a tiger there, of those two great mistakes, which mistake are people more likely to make? they're much more likely to make the second one in my own experience. The result of that is a kind of paranoid trance in which we go through our days thinking that the world is scarier, more threatening, and more hazardous, and that there are fewer resources out there and fewer resources within ourselves than is actually the case. I think about this in terms of traveling through airports. For example, wherever we go these days in America, we see airports with big signs, threat level orange, or about every 90 seconds, the same recorded voice comes over the loudspeaker. The Department of Homeland Security has determined that it's threat level orange. Now, orange is the last stop before red, but if you really think about it, what are the actual odds at that airport on that day on your flight of anything bad really happening? It's green or maybe a lake full of green with a tablespoon of yellow. It's not orange. And yet we tend to take that for granted. Plus we're surrounded by so many threatening messages in the media and in the world at large. It's easy to get lost in this paranoid trance. That's why it's important to wake up from the trance and see the world clearly, not through rose-colored glasses, but not through orange ones either. Last and important point for some people particularly those who have a trauma history, it can feel frightening to feel safer because it's when you feel safer that you lower your guard and whap, that's when they really get you. So take good care of yourself here and if you notice any resistance to feeling safer, particularly if you have a trauma history, it's really all right to pull out of this exercise and come back to it later when you're ready. <laughs> 